Northeast Florida. And today we're going to talk about chemical control program. Uh, this is important to promote food and personnel safety. Uh, basically to make sure our handling and shipping of chemical products doesn't compromise food safety, make sure that the production and distribution of quality, safe, legal food products. This includes pest management, maintenance, sanitation, and hygiene, uh, as well as some other categories too. Basically, we have to receive this training annually and comply fully. Uh, any concerns or deviations have to be brought to the attention of management. So let, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start with the safety data sheets. Uh, safety data sheets, uh, basically you'll find hard copies uh, located in the binder above the chemical storage cabinet. Uh, you also find them on the uh, online library located on the task bar of the volunteer and receiving computers. Uh, that's brought to us by Global Safety Management. Uh, you can also find them online through Google search. Uh, but basically the reason why safety data sheets are important, they provide in-depth guidance on that chemical's flammability and firefighting as well as what it cannot be combined with, uh, what PPE or you know, special personal protective equipment is required, any disposal considerations, uh, like if it needs to be thrown away in a certain way, uh, as well as uh, any first aid instructions in case of ingestion or if it gets in your skin or eyes, that kind of thing. Those are all very important reasons to have those safety data sheets accessible and available at, at, uh, very quickly. Um, so first we're gonna talk about uh, chemicals that we receive uh, from donations or that we purchase, uh, how we store them, how we ship them, and how we distribute them. Not necessarily for what we use internally with our own facility use, but this is to pass along to our agencies and, and, and so forth. These are, are requirements that, uh, expectations. Uh, first and foremost, we need to store the chemical product at least one pallet position away from food items, uh, preferably even on a different rack row. And the reason is you want to prevent cross-contamination, you want to prevent that contamination risk. So for example, you never ever want to store chemicals on a rack above food where there's a risk of detergent you know, or, or some type of, of leak down onto the food. Um, if there is any potential uh, contamination, that food does have to get thrown away. Uh, when in doubt, you throw it out. Um, also, when you're picking orders, uh, let's say that uh, a pig sheet comes through and you're pulling an order that has chemical product on there, whether it be bleach or, or detergent or anything like that, you always want to pick those chemical cases or chemical items first before you pick the food and make sure those chemical cases are on the bottom of the pallet. Never put it on the top of uh, the food that you've already uh, pulled that order. Uh, always make sure those chemicals are on the bottom. Uh, the chemicals that we receive in order to be uh, accept acceptable have to be labeled with the name, the ingredients, and with the safety hazard. So if the label's not on a bottle, do not accept that chemical because who knows what's inside. Um, also the original seal must be intact, so if you have any open packaging, uh, that'd be a reject as well. You don't want to accept anything that has open packaging. Okay, so uh, next I'm going to get into chemicals that are for our facility use only, not for distributing out uh, for the clients we serve. Uh, so for example, the, uh, only the chemicals in the safety data sheet book are approved for facility use. So you don't want to use any chemicals uh, other than we already have the safety data sheets for, and they have to be approved by management before you can use them. So making sure that, for example, pesticides aren't used in the facility, we'll get into that in more detail later on. This, these rules also apply for contract labor, so not just our staff, but anyone that we hire to work in our facility has to use chemicals that we approve as well. Um, our chemicals are pre-mixed and pre-diluted to the correct, to the, uh, correct strength, um, so do, you don't need to add water. Uh, you know, we, we have a company called Cintas come to uh, you know, with, with our chemical tanks and, and it's already pre-diluted. -pre uh, it is important to only use one unit of chemical for your spray bottles or your mop buckets and only one capful for the floor scrubber. The reason for that is these chemicals are expensive. Uh, you don't need to use more than necessary because it, it's wasteful. When we dispose chemicals, we, it needs to go directly to the dumpster and making sure that we use any, uh, any open containers has a plastic bag uh, around it so it doesn't leak out. Um, if there is a spill when we're working in the facility, make sure that all work in the area stops in the immediate area uh, until that spill is cleaned up. And same reason that when in doubt, we want to throw out any food that has potential contamination risk of a spill getting, getting on that food um, or anything running through that spill. So we want to make sure we use disposable gloves, 
uh, disinfect the area and make sure it's, it's cleaned up really good before we continue production. Um, also, you'll notice that uh, some of our mop heads, and, or, or uh, mop handles and mop buckets uh, have green tape handles. Uh, green tape and also is labeled for restroom only. Uh, these utensils are for only for use in the restroom, nowhere else in the facility. And likewise, you don't want to use anything that does not have the green tape handles in the restroom. You want to make sure that it stays segregated uh, for their specific use. Also, uh, if you're going to mop anywhere in the facility, you want to make sure you use wet floor signs. And that basically signifies this is a slip and fall hazard area, uh, making sure that they're uh, to, to reduce that risk as best we can. All right, so next we're going to talk about the specific use for the chemicals that we have. So, you know, we have a, a set amount uh, with a set use. So, for example, uh, bleach water you want to use to clean the hoppers and, and blood spills and, and, and mold and that kind of stuff, bodily fluids, uh, that you want to use bleach for that. Uh, the FC1 floor cleaner you're going to use to mop the floors or clean out truck beds. Uh, the DS1 disinfectant you're going to use on toilets and sinks and restroom surfaces. This chemical can also be used for stainless steel tables to or disinfecting anything that needs to be disinfected. Uh, the GL1 glass cleaner is used for mirrors and office windows. The FC4 neutral floor cleaner is used for office floors. We have an odor remover chemical that's used for the floor scrubber. Um, and DEF fluid is used for the vehicle DEF fluid tanks. And air fresheners and antibacterial wipes are used if approved with the corresponding safety data sheet that we have. Uh, so those are the specific use for chemicals. If you see any other chemicals that you'd like to use, again, bring it to management and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, approve it uh, before you can use it. Uh, the last topic I wanted to go over is pest management. Uh, as a reminder, no pesticides are to be used in the facility without approval and documentation from the pest control provider. This includes RAID, Roundup, rat poisons, anything along those lines we're not going to use uh, and we're not going to distribute either. So if that stuff comes through donations, we want to reject it, make sure it gets out of our facility as soon as possible. We don't want to store it. Uh, the pest control provider must follow the correct guidelines for that specific chemical and document exactly when, how, and where that chemical is used uh, both inside and outside the facility. So. Um, as far as training goes, we need to conduct this type of training annually for all operations personnel to review and modify the policy um, and record basically who's been, been trained in this. Basically, the training records need to be kept for two years to ensure that all employees are, are, are trained annually. Thank you much for your attention and stay safe out there.